imagine disappearing without a trace. One minute you're there, the next you're gone. That's what happened to not one or two, but three women in Springfield, Missouri on June 7, 1992. This is not a magic show where people can suddenly vanish into thin air. The Springfield Three refers to the mysterious case of three women who disappeared without a trace and have yet to be found. This leaves us with several questions. Who were these women? What happened to them? And who was behind this case? Let's try to answer all these questions. The three victims include 47-year-old Cheryl Levitt, her daughter Suzanne Streeter, age 19, and Streeter's friend Stacy McCall, who was 18. They vanished from the home they shared by Levitt and Streeter, located in Springfield. Surprisingly, the women's disappearances have stumped investigators for more than three decades. Despite countless leads, extensive search operations, and numerous interviews, the case of the Springfield Three remains one of the most baffling missing persons cases in American history. What's more shocking is that authorities have not given up yet. They continue to seek information that may solve this mystery that has left an indelible mark on the small town of Springfield. People are still being asked to help with this case, just like they were when it first started. This shows the hope for new information to solve this mystery is still strong. June 6, 1992 was a day of joy and celebration for many in Springfield. This was the high school graduation day for both Stacy McCall and Susie Streeter. The air was filled with excitement and anticipation as the young women and their classmates took a significant step into a new chapter of their lives. Little did anyone suspect that this ceremony, beginning new opportunities and adventures, would soon be overshadowed by a dark cloud of mystery. The police reported that Stacy and Susie attended a few graduation parties to celebrate following their graduation ceremonies. After the celebrations, the two friends decided to spend the rest of the night at Susie's house, where Cheryl was also present. Sadly, this was the last time anyone saw Cheryl, Susie, and Stacy. The details at the scene of the abduction provided some clues about the events that fateful night. As reported by the Springfield News Leader, it was evident from the personal items found in the house that both Streeter and McCall had prepared for bed before their disappearance. Jewelry pieces were discovered in the bathroom, pointing towards the likelihood that they had retired their adornments for the night. Damp clothes, possibly used for makeup removal after their graduation celebrations, were also discovered. Notably, McCall's shorts were found neatly folded and placed atop her shoes, further indicating the women had settled in for the evening when the abduction transpired. Streeter's mom, Cheryl Levitt, last communicated with a friend around 11.15 p.m. on June 6. When the police arrived at the residence the following day, they found evidence indicating Cheryl had indeed slept in her bed. All of her personal belongings were undisturbed. The authorities hypothesized that the women were taken in the early hours of June 7, between 2.15 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. All this sounds pretty mysterious, right? Well, it becomes even more puzzling. When the authorities arrived on the morning of June 7, they found the family dog unharmed and calm. According to the police reports, keys, money, jewelry, and other personal items surrounded the dog, all intact and untouched. Moreover, the women's three vehicles were still present, parked at their usual spots, providing no significant leads for the authorities. And the most shocking of all, there were no signs of a struggle in the home. Imagine three people being taken without a sound or any struggle. Here is what retired Springfield Police Captain Tony Glenn had to say about this incident. The only thing unusual about this house was that the three women were missing from it, he previously told the Springfield News Leader. Glenn added, You had this feeling as you looked around that something was missing. Something had to be missing. But there wasn't. Just them. According to the Charlie Project, the only thing in the home that was amiss was a shattered porch light. In addition, the front door was unlocked an unusual circumstance for a home that appeared perfectly normal otherwise. The police set its eyes on Robert Craig Cox, a convicted killer as a prime suspect in the mysterious case. Convicted for murdering a Florida woman, Cox was living in Springfield at the time of the women's disappearance after his conviction was overturned. Cox had served nine years in prison for kidnapping and assault in California. A lack of evidence saw his murder conviction reversed, 
after which he relocated to Springfield. Cox's movement and actions were a significant interest to the authorities, as stated by former prosecuting attorney Daryl Moore. Cox's initial alibi, his girlfriend's statement that they were together at the time of the disappearance, fell apart when she admitted to the police that it was a lie. KY3 reporter Dennis Graves interviewed Cox, who chillingly told him, I know that they are dead. However, he refrained from spelling out any further details. Currently serving a life sentence in Texas for robbery, Cox has yet to be charged in connection with the Springfield 3 disappearance despite heavy suspicion. Bart Streeter, related to two of the missing women, was also a suspect at one point, but was subsequently cleared of involvement. McCall's mother, Janice, expressed her relentless pursuit for justice and resolution in the mysterious disappearance of her daughter. She firmly declared, My baby is gone. We want some justice. Tragically, Janice last spoke with her daughter the night before her disappearance, a moment punctuated by shared expressions of love. When she couldn't reach her daughter or her friends the following day, Janice went to the house where her daughter was supposed to stay. Despite the front door being unlocked, there was no sign of the women. She immediately contacted the authorities and distributed the missing persons photos, hoping to gather any information about their whereabouts. However, the case eventually turned cold. Despite other families involved in the case declaring their loved ones dead, Janice wrote on the Surviving Parents Coalition that she couldn't bear to do the same. She chooses to hope for her daughter's return, refusing to declare her dead while there's still a chance she could be alive. According to the Springfield Police Department, a reward of $43,000 has been established for the location and prosecution of the persons responsible for the disappearance of the three women. So, this was the heartbreaking story of the Springfield Three. However, this case is not an isolated one. In fact, it's just one among thousands of other missing person cases in the United States alone. Every day, families are left devastated and searching for answers as their loved ones go missing without a trace. The lack of closure and information only adds to their pain and suffering. The families are left with countless questions, wondering where their loved ones could be and what could have happened to them. If you found the video helpful, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, let us know in the comments if you want to see more videos on similar topics. You can also check out our previous video on the Battle of Karai. Goodbye until next time.